What's up, Sam Ashers, and welcome to the Spotlight. I'm Dave Stutz, and I'm here at the Paramount in Huntington, New York, hanging out with one of the coolest guys around and frontman to the Sharks, Dennis Quaid. Dennis, thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. I know it's a hectic day, but thanks for squeezing the scene. It is a hectic day? Yeah. Is it? I don't seem to notice. Maybe every day I have is hectic because it just seems normal to me. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. So we're here at the Paramount. Is this the start of the tour or have you been touring? I'm working currently working on a series, a uh, television series for Amazon, Goliath, with Harry, uh, with uh, Billy Bob Thornton. And uh, so we're doing sort of mini tours. We're going out, you know, like from Thursday to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nice. And come back in and let it out again. We just did uh, something down in... Uh, in Florida, at Naples. Now we're here, and then uh, I think we've got the Mint coming up. We got a whole, we got a bunch of dates this year. That's awesome. We're so stoked to have you here in New York. That's amazing. Now you're no stranger to Sam Ash, is that right? No, I. Uh, you guys have have helped me out in a pinch. Really? Very well. What yeah. happened? Well, the the tailor that I got was on your wall there in New York. I think it's Thirty Third Street. Is that what it is? Thirty Fourth Street. Thirty Fourth Street. Between Eighth and Ninth. Yeah. That's right, because I could see the Empire State Building down yeah. at the end. And I went in there and just fell in love right to, with the guitar that was on your wall. You know, I was actually there that day. I remember you being well, there, taking a look at that guitar, yeah. and it seemed like the right guitar for you, Everybody that's for sure. Everybody was really great and helpful, and, and uh, you know, they pay a lot of attention and have a lot of knowledge over there, you guys do. That's great to hear. That's well, why I appreciate it. it. Awesome. And um, it really I mean, it changed my life as far as uh, being on stage with the Taylors. You know, before that, I'd used um, an electric. Uh, you know, I'd used a Strat uh, this, that I have, uh, and so I decided just to go completely acoustic. And then Jamie uh, James, he plays electric behind me, and the sound really goes well together. Right, blends well. That's great. I'm glad it's been working out for you. How long have you been a musician? Since I was 12. Really? Yeah, I started playing guitar when I was 12, and. Uh, in fact, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be, uh, you know, a songwriter. Uh, you know, I wanted to be a musician, basically. And, you know, acting came along, and there was an acting teacher in Houston, the University of Houston, who uh, my brother and a bunch of other people who work a lot, uh, he just taught it as a craft, and it seemed like really real and tangible to me. And I figured music would probably come along in there someplace. Sure. And but I went out to LA and I you know got into movies and about uh, five years in I got a film, uh, the night the lights went on in Georgia, that uh, I wrote three songs for and got on the album and awesome. uh, also during that we shot it in Chattanooga and somebody knocked on my door, the stranger said how would you like to be a country western star, and it was uh, Cowboy Jack Clement I don't know if you know who he is he was the original engineer at Sun Studios oh cool and. Uh, uh, you know, Elvis was there and all that. And he was also, uh, he produced uh, uh, Waylon Jennings' Dream in My Dreams. And was Johnny Cash's producer, too, uh, all throughout his career. And uh, he took me on as, you know, became a mentor. That's great. So, you know, I've had, I've had and then I've had songs on other uh, soundtracks and things like that. Even recently. The Big Easy, uh, yeah, I have a song, well, Out of the Box, the... Uh, Title song of our album is gonna is uh, Adam Carolla has done a film and uh, documentary that's gonna be in. I can only and imagine. That's crazy. I saying. can only imagine. Yeah, right. Yeah, the song wasn't in the film, but right. Yeah, they made the uh, video. Absolutely. And how many instruments do you play? I play uh, guitar. I'm a rhythm player. Okay. Really, I play piano, but I don't really like play you know, formally. I I knew some piano, and then I got Great Balls of Fire, right. another music movie. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I had a year to prepare for it, so I was basically chained to the uh, piano for a year. And uh, I had some great teachers. Jerry Lee was one of my teachers, in fact. That's amazing. And uh, so it, it's just, well, I really took to it, and then so I just kept it up. Right. I right. wouldn't call myself anywhere near, you know, a great player on the piano. Like Ken Stangy, our, our pianist, I mean, he's virtuoso. Sure. Really. I mean, he goes out, he plays with Paul Anka, you know, with yeah. his, all that Frank sure. Sinatra stuff and nice. orchestration. He was Roger Miller's uh, keyboard player for 18 years. Amazing. Yeah, you know, the great Roger Miller. Now, going back to when you were 12 years old, do you remember the first instrument that you had? Yeah, I do. It was a Kmart guitar. Really? 
yeah, uh, acoustic. And my grandfather bought it for me, and it was like $12. And gosh, I wish it was still around. I was going to ask if you still have it. I, it's not here, but my second guitar is. And I got That's that great. for Christmas, and my mother, my mother got it for me because I'd already found it over at a music store at a mall in Houston. It was a Yamaha, like 150, I think. Oh, sure. And uh, so it was an early Christmas present, and I remember it so clearly because it was the same night that Elvis did his comeback. Okay. You know, in the black leather and, the, sure. and that rectangle that uh, in the round, because that was on television in the mall. And uh, so I've still got that guitar. That's great. Amazing. Is there a holy grail piece of gear out there that you have your eyes on that's just... Something that you've no, I would have like had it. Okay, you would have you found it and got it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have bought it with that movie star money. Nice, but uh, I did have a 1959 um, uh, Sunburst Strat. Oh wow! Like Buddy Holly Strat. That's and that awesome. thing was everybody who ever played it wanted to have it. I bet. And it disappeared. Yeah, that's sad. That was sad. So speaking of which, what do you find more challenging, being a critically acclaimed actor or a touring musician? Who said I was critically acclaimed? <laughs> hey, I, I am a touring musician. Critically acclaimed is, I guess, a subjective. Well, you've won some, some Critic Choice <laughs> Awards in your day. Uh, yeah, I've done, I've done right with, with acting. I love acting. I love, I love making movies. I really do. I always have. And... Uh, uh, especially these days, it's really great. Television's fantastic, streaming especially, because it's like what movies were back in the 70s where you feel like the inmates have taken over the asylum. <laughs> and you can bring, you know, there's a lot of stuff, really great stuff getting done. Nice. And uh, music is just, I don't know, to me is, if I choose between one and the other, I, I think I would take music because for one thing, when you do a film, you need a lot of other people. You know, you even need another person to do a scene with, for the most part, to have a story. When you play music, I, you know, I can do what I, what got me through my teenage years was alone in my bedroom, you know, That's right. playing. And also, when we play gigs like here at the Paramount, it's like it's so immediate. It's it's presentational. You know, you can really see the audience and oh, true. feel the audience, and you're right there with them. It's kind of like I guess the closest to acting is doing theater. Right. You know, that's great. Now, how did you meet the Sharks, and then where did the name come from? The, the Sharks, I was, I was going through a divorce in the year 2000, and uh, I was feeling kind of, you know, pretty low, I guess. And I, I, hadn't played, I hadn't played music, really, hardly for about 10 years. Wow. That's a long time. Uh, yeah, because I, in, the 80s, I, in the 80s, I had a band, which was basically basically Bonnie Raitt's band, uh, they were called, we were called the Eclectics. And the night, <laughs> the night we got our record deal, you saw that movie, The Commitments? Did you ever see that? I'm not sure. Well, the night we got our record deal, we broke up in the dressing room. Wow. And uh, backstage, and the next day I was in cocaine rehab. Mm. And that's when my uh, Strat disappeared too, as well, at 59 Strat. That's um, terrible. Uh, anyway, I just had to get my act together, and so um, for ten years, I uh, I just didn't play music. It was it was just kind of one of those things I associated with with uh, with doing uh, nefarious drugs and things like that. And uh, I think it, it was a, you know I had a hole going on there somewhere. Sure. But, uh, and uh, so I hadn't played for ten years, but I you know now I was just like ready. I was ready to 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 do it. Sure. And so I went to see Harry Dean Stanton, who was uh, another, I've known him for forever. I don't know if you know Harry Dean Stanton. He was like Pretty in Pink. He played the father in Pretty in Pink. He was, uh, uh, yeah, I know you. Know, everybody knows his face when they see him. Sure. Great actor. And uh, I went to see him. He was, he was singing and playing over at the Met. And uh, Jamie and a couple of the other sharks were in his band. And, uh, they asked me to get up on stage, you know, just to sit in for one. And that was the first time I'd been on stage in a very long time. And I got up, and Jamie and I just really clicked. Wow. Right you off the bat. Yeah, right off the bat. Or you just ran for it. 
Yeah, just really just hey, just like it. clicked, you know. Okay. It's kind of like magic, nice. you know, because we grew up we're close in age, and even though he grew up in Toronto and I grew up in Houston, it was just like it, we just knew and listened to the and loved the same music. Sure, you know, had those rhythms, and uh, Harry gave us his blessing, and we were off to the races. That's We've perfect. been together now, all the same five guys for um, nineteen years. Wow, it doesn't happen very often. No. That's great. And where'd the name Sharks come from? The Sharks came from, we didn't know what to call ourselves, and we were rehearsing at my house, and my son, who is now 26, we're saying, you know, what should we name ourselves? So we asked Jack, what should we name ourselves? He was nine at the time. He said, oh, the Sharks. Perfect. And that's the only reason he said that was because it was Shark Week. Nice. You know, on TV. <laughs> so Everybody loves Shark Week. So, yeah, I'm always very Jack. grateful it wasn't Dinosaur Week. <laughs> right. so, That's awesome. So that was our name. Well, Dennis, we certainly don't want to take up any more of your time. We hope you have an amazing show tonight. Once again, thanks for Thank being here. Thank you very here. much, Ben. Thanks Absolutely. for coming, coming out. I really appreciate it. Uh, you want to tell them where they can keep up with you, where they can keep up with the band? Well, uh, we're on Facebook, uh, Dennis Quaid and the Sharks, DQ and the Sharks, however you want to call it. And uh, we're, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, our record is out uh, called Out of the Box. Dennis Quaid and the Sharks, Out of the Box. We're on uh, just Spotify. We're on uh, iTunes. We're soon to have a vinyl out in April, which we're really looking forward to. And that's what I really consider my record opening. But you can get anything anywhere you can get records right now. You can get it. You can get it. So go look for it. Awesome. Thank you. Dennis, thanks again. Have a great show. You bet. Appreciate it. All right.